Vacation, come. It's paradise. Don't worry about the money, go. Low is the price. This monument, which stands gracefully at this place commonly known as Diskilo area in Addis Ababa, tells the story of the infamous brutal massacre of the residents of Addis Ababa by the cruel fascist Italian marshal Rudolf Graziani. It is simply a reminder of those 33,000 innocent Ethiopians killed in three days reign of terror regardless of age, sex and living condition. That monument represented the people uh, who were massacred uh, under the Graziani uh, by the order of uh, Mussolini. So it was uh, a reflection of the brutal uh, murders of uh, the fascism uh, against the people of Ethiopia. The Martyrs Monument, which is locally named as Yesamata Taut, signifies the country's sad days inflicted by the fascist Italian colonizers and their attempt to assert their grip on their would-be colonial state through terror and brutal atrocity. The massacre took place in response to an assassination attempt against Marshal Graziani by two Ethiopians in the 19th of February 1937 and a seemingly defiant act of patriotism. This sad moment in Ethiopia's history has remained the most melancholically unforgettable moment for generations to follow. Isaac Abraham is a master's student at the Addis Ababa University. He talks about what he really feels whenever he is reminded of that event. Frankly speaking, it always makes me sad. Whenever I pass across this monument and think of those innocent Ethiopians fallen by the hands of the fascists. Though I was not there, I have read many things about it. This nation is the result of that huge sacrifice. When I see this monument, I can understand that this is not simply stone. Rather, it's a living witness of the mass killing committed in Addis Ababa. It symbolizes the cruelty of colonialism and how our forefathers preserved this country in defense to them. The entire horror befallen on the citizens of Addis Ababa is artistically depicted on this 28 meter long monument made by two Yugoslav architects. The monument is in the form of a white obelisk with a black bas reliefs of scenes of the massacre as well as scenes of the funeral according to the remains of the victims. The monument was inaugurated in 19th of February 1942 in memory of those Ethiopians to tell the world and remind all Ethiopians of suicide and patriotic moments in their history. This monument stands at the Sidiskilo Square in front of the Yekatit Atraulet Hospital, named after the massacre. Also facing the square are the southern gates of the then Ganetalul Palace, which is now the main campus of Addis Ababa University, and the Lions Park. Addis Ababa is endowed with various monuments and statues that tell history of heroism, patriotism and freedom standing at every major square of the city. The Authority for Research and Conservation of Cultural Heritage currently uh, registered about 11 monuments and statues uh, in Addis Ababa. As you know that Addis Ababa is, okay, Addis Ababa is 126 years old. Compared with other uh, cities and towns, it's a young city, but uh, the establishment of Addis Ababa as the capital city of uh, Ethiopia uh, coincided with the period, the heyday of uh, colonialism in the world, so that uh, 
the monument is in Addis Ababa represents us, the anti-colonial struggles, the anti-fascist struggles of the Ethiopians. The Addis Ababa monuments usually represented the peoples of Ethiopia. The Freedom Monument, dubbed as Meazia Hayasaba Tawilt, is one of those monuments that signify the country's struggle against foreign invasion and the subsequent win over Italian colonizers. Standing at Arakilo Square, the Freedom Monument commemorates the victory of Ethiopia over the fascist Italians in 1941, as well as those gallant Ethiopians who perished resisting the invading fascist forces during the war. During that time, we went to the jungle with no modern military equipment and armaments. We had no clothes in our bags and shoes to wear. We entered the war barefoot. We killed many, and we were also killed in mass. We wounded many, and we were also wounded too. We were bled for the freedom of our beloved Ethiopia, and we finally triumphed. Thus, this monument is erected in memory of patriots who protected their sense of freedom with their blood and souls. There's nothing like freedom. A nation is no more if there is no freedom. Patriots of the time fought for their freedom. They won the Italians with the continued and fierce struggle. Hence, this monument signifies the patriots of Ethiopia and their long-standing and ardent struggle. This is a monument of victory and freedom. This 15-meter monument is supported by pillars and has six entrances. The entire history of the five years' struggle is narrated by writing carved on the stone tablets round the monument. That the monument is, uh, represent uh, uh, the Ethiopian patriot, uh, those uh, who fought uh, uh, against uh, Italian invasion. Eight sides of the monument narrate the contribution of all Ethiopians in the struggle against the fascists, including women, farmers and secret patriots who used to relay information to patriots. At the top of the monument, we see the line of Judah holding Ethiopian flag. Now, the monument stands there forever, telling of the freedom gained through blood and sweat of Ethiopian patriots. When talking of monuments of Addis, the equestrian statue of Menelik II stands unique among all others. It is erected on the square of Emperor Menelik near St. George Church. It is a standing testimony of the famous Battle of Adwa in 1896, where an African nation, Ethiopia, triumphed over an European colonizer. This uh, statue is a uh, unique statue in the history of Ethiopia. Uh, even the history of Africa uh, behind uh, this uh, statue, uh, there is a lot of uh, history uh, that tells uh, us uh, not uh, a victory of uh, Ethiopia, not a victory of Africa, a victory of black people. The victory of Adwa is something special as it symbolizes the first black victory over colonialism. We, for instance, during the second invasion of Italy 40 years later, followed the deeds of our forefathers. The victory of Adwa taught us heroism and patriotism. We fought with a great courage so that we repeated history. Abebo Bekele, who is a PhD student at the Addis Ababa University, says the statue of Emperor Menelik is a living witness of the valiant history of Ethiopia and Ethiopian patriotism. It especially illustrates the heroism of our forefathers who defeated the Italian army in 1896 with conventional warfare and traditional armaments facing up to the Italian army, raised up with all kinds of modern weaponry of the time. And the of a historic statue, it tells history, and history tells us who our ancestors were and what our past was to the coming generation who haven't witnessed that event. Thus, the current generation ought to know 
the history of their country. So for the one who asks what was the past history of the nation, it demonstrates Ethiopia's heroic moments. It is something that we have to be proud of. It is also the pride of all our African brothers. The statue represents a Menelik in his coronation robe riding his horse, Abadanyo, gloriously. This statue has been dismantled and buried behind the palace during the Italian occupation and avoidance of the rampage by the Italians to destroy all national symbols and heritage of the nation. It was restored then to its original place in 1941 as the invaders were hosted by the patriots and the allied forces. Among the statues that signify anti-colonial struggle of Ethiopia is the statue of His Holiness Abuna Petros, who was one of the first four Ethiopian archbishops anointed by Patriarch of the Alexandria Coptic Church. Fascist invaders tried to persuade him to preach to the people of Ethiopia to accept the leadership of Italians, but the Archbishop faced public execution by preaching in defense of the invaders. The statue was erected in memory of the Patriot Abuna Petros, depicting him in chains and the armor by which he was killed in front of him. The statue of Abuna Petros was now displaced from its original place due to the railway construction undergoing in the area. Officials assured that this was just a temporary displacement and it will be restored in its place once the construction is finalized. As you know, he was just a uh, moral, uh, spiritual and immoral leader of the Ethiopians and he was part of uh, the patriotic movement in Ethiopia during the Italian invasion. So that uh, statue is currently uh, as, a result of the, as a result of the railway uh, construction. It was temporarily brought, uh, just skillfully uh, lifted up and uh, we, uh, we brought the statue here uh, in the National Museum of Ethiopia. Korean Veterans Monument is also a testimony of Ethiopians' long-standing heroic commitments for peace and stability, not only in their own country, but also in other countries all over the world. As you know, Ethiopia participated under the League, under the United Nations forces uh, during the wars of the two Koreans. Uh, it was, Ethiopia was the first country to participate from Africa. And Ethiopia was also a country where no prisoners of wars during the wars, the Korean War. So, uh, and also, in fact, uh, it was, they were very successful in battle. So this statue was for the memory of the Ethiopians who lost their lives uh, in Korea. This is a memorable of those Ethiopians who perished fighting for the freedom of South Korea. It was built to demonstrate the patriotic valor of those soldiers we had never given during that war. Our courage amazed the world. Erected on the square of the railway station, the Lion of Judah monument is one of the prominent tourist attractions. The monument honors Emperor Menelik's devotion to link Ethiopia with foreign countries through railway lines. It was made of bronze by French architects and was inaugurated in 1929. It had the faces of four high personalities on four sides. On its northern side is the face of Menelik II. Queen Zaudetu and a circular relief and golden crown is located on the southern side. Rasma Kondun and Emperor Haile Selassie are on the east and west sides of the statue. This statue was dismantled and taken to Rome during the Italian invasion in 1936 and stayed there for about 30 years till it came back home through long and constrained negotiations. <laughs> This black stone carved monument is erected near the National Theatre. This monument of the Line of Judah, also known as 
line of Haile Selassie I had a very distinctive and contemporary touch of art which invites viewers to have a deep look at it to understand what it stands for and admire at its beauty. The statue was erected to commemorate the 25th anniversary of Emperor Haile Selassie's coronation. The monument is the work of a French sculptor, Maurice Chalka, and Henry Schomet. The monument was said to be complex as it doesn't seem like a real line. However, the monument has an artistic value with an Egyptian and Farsi touch. The picture of this monument has served for many years being the logo of the then Ethiopian Tourism Commission. <laughs> This is Victory Monument, locally known as the Latin Monument, literally meaning our victory. It is located around the headquarters of Ethiopian Postal Service. It honors the members of the heroic Ethiopian Defense Force who fought fighting the invasion of Somalia in 1976 and repelled the aggressive Somali invasion. It has a socialist touch as it was built by North Koreans and reveals that Ethiopia was a socialist state during that time. Now, the monument is dedicated to Ethiopian friendship in honor of Cuban soldiers who fought alongside Ethiopians during the Ethiopia-Somalia war. <laughs> The Sebastopol Monument is also the one which is found in Addis Ababa, witnessing the history of Ethiopia. The monument is a bronze replica of the first cannon in Ethiopia made by Europeans by the order of Emperor Tedros II. It signifies the ambition of the emperor to transform the country with modern armaments. The cannon went out of use after it was fired once. Now, the original mortar lies in the plateau of Magdala in the northern part of Ethiopia. <laughs> the Rasmakonin statue, or the stream of Rasmakonin, was built by Emperor Haile Selassie in memory of his father Rasmakonin Haile Mikhail five years before the fascist invasion. Rasmakonin was also a very uh, important figure in the Ethiopian history in the Battle of Adwa. When he died, uh, he was a governor of Harar. The statue shows only the upper body of Rasmakonin with a relief of Lion of Judah under it. The stream under it is said to be used as potable water for nearby residents of Addis. <laughs> The statue of the Russian literary giant Alexander Pushkin is among the statues erected in honor of non-Ethiopian personalities. Of course, the grandfather of Pushkin, Hannibal, had his roots from Ethiopia. This statue of Pushkin is now found in the premises of the National Museum temporarily until the completion of the construction of Pushkin Square Grand Sarvet. The statue of Karl Marx is also found in Addis, around Sidiskilo, in front of the Addis Ababa University. It was built for the 10th year anniversary of the Derg regime in 1984. It manifests the socialist ideology that the country followed at the time. In addition to their historical significance, mentioned heritage are potential sources of tourism. They are descriptive of the early days of Ethiopia. Thus, one may surely get additional insight to the history of Ethiopia by visiting this heritage. For instance, this statue speaks the greatness of Menelik II and the heroic history of Ethiopia. Besides, tourists may get many things from them. They unveil the courageous nature of Ethiopians, their love for their country, their sacrifice for freedom and pride of their country. Thus, it has to be well preserved, as monuments are evidences for us and potential of tourism and research for foreigners. Hermes Nemani, Heritage Research, 
and development officer says these monuments and statues are the properties of the Ethiopian people and the history of the country. Those heritage are a property of the Ethiopian people, not a property of uh, some uh, office, government office, or some institution. Ethiopian heritage is a property of Ethiopian people. Uh, we have uh, protect uh, our uh, heritage. Ephraim Amare, who is Heritage Inventory and Inspection Director at the Authority for Research and Conservation of Cultural Heritage, says the authority is working with stakeholders to conserve, protect and promote those heritage. Currently, there are some movements, some uh, practical measures by the collaboration of the City Council. Uh, the Addis Ababa Tourism Bureau and the ARCH, uh, which was not there for many years. So that's the clearing of uh, the compound and the guarding of the compound in 24 hours are very uh, good measures uh, for the monuments. And the uh, gardening of them is another very important uh, measures which are taking place. Uh, and the other is uh, working together with various stakeholders very important as you say the, for the uh, tour operators we should work together uh, other stakeholders like religious uh, uh, institutions much is expected to be done to improve the status of the heritage in a way that could benefit the country and the public this monument has to be well preserved and transferred to the next generation. It's irreplaceable. I will do what it takes to conserve the heritage of this country with sense of belongingness. The contribution of the public is vital to preserve monuments. This is our country and it's our property. Nobody will come and take care of it. We have to discharge our responsibility in conserving them from natural and man-made disaster. Inviting you to come and see the monuments of Addis and history of Ethiopia, we call upon stakeholders and the public to strengthen concerted efforts to offer a better attention to the monuments in terms of conservation, verification and promotion. Addis,